Hi, I'm Glenn Rogers, and this is Biblical Insights. The title of our video today is Internalizing Jesus. Internalizing Jesus. What does that mean exactly, internalizing Jesus? Well, we're going to read a text from John, the Gospel of John, in a few minutes where Jesus talked about this idea. But let me kind of give you some things to think about before we actually get to that text. For a lot of people, uh, Jesus is, an, is a, a historical figure, and, and that's what he is. I mean, some people used to doubt that he even existed, but that's, that's been done away with. We, we, we know for a fact, there's historical evidence that Jesus actually lived and died in the first century and that he was a significant uh, Jewish rabbi that, that began, <coughs> excuse me, a movement that became known as, as Christianity. And, and so we know he's an actual, real, historical person who did some significant things. But for many people, that's all he is. And uh, even for many Christians, they know he's in the Bible and that he died on the cross, and that's important. But that's as far as it goes for them. And, uh, you know, I, I know who Abraham Lincoln was. He was a great American president. I know who George Washington was. He was a great American president. And uh, whatever country you live in, you may have some very significant leaders there that you're aware of. If you live in India, you, you're aware of who Gandhi was. If you live in Africa, you're probably aware of who Nelson Mandela was. Um, and, and, and so you, you know these figures and they're important historical figures. They did important things in and for your country. Uh, or, or your the continent that you live on, if you you know, like if you're African, um, but Jesus is a little bit more than that, and and that's the part that many people don't get, and that's the thing that makes them not very strong Christians. Jesus isn't just an important historical figure who did some important stuff a long, long time ago, and we talk about him each week when we go to church, and you know, that, that for some people, that's all it is, but that's not enough. That's not nearly enough. There has to be more when it comes to Jesus. Well, what? What does there have to be? We have to internalize Jesus. We have to make him part of our lives. He has to live in us. We need a relationship with him. And, and he needs to be there with us in our heart and in our mind every single day, all day long. He needs to be part of us. And, and when we take him into our lives, when we internalize him, and he's there, just like one of our family members or just like a good friend, and we spend time talking with him and uh, listening to him and thinking about things he, he tells us, taking his advice and, and that sort of thing, when he's part of us, then things get better. We get better. That's what we're talking about today. So we're going to read from John chapter 6, uh, beginning with verse 53, and read down through verses th verse 58 and uh, see what Jesus was talking about. Now, probably be helpful to you when this video is done, if you get out your Bible and you start reading at the beginning of John 6 and read through that whole chapter until you get to this section, 53 through 58, and then you'll understand a little bit better what he was talking about. But just briefly, uh, Jesus had fed a large crowd of people and uh, they got a free meal, free food, and, and they were full and satisfied and didn't cost them anything. And that was pretty cool. This guy gives them away free food. And so they were following him. And, and Jesus was a little annoyed with that, you know. And he was saying, look, you're just following me because I gave you free food. You know, well, they didn't like that accusation. And so they started questioning him. And there was this back and forth, you know, between them of Jesus and Moses and manna and all of this kind of stuff. Okay. And, and so... As we go through that conversation, we're going to pick up with verse 53, and here's what Jesus is saying. It says, Jesus said, The truth is, unless you consume me, taking me into your heart and mind, as if you were eating my flesh and drinking my blood, you cannot have eternal life. 
Those who take me into their hearts will have eternal life and will be resurrected to enjoy life on the last day. For I am the real spiritual food you need. My flesh and my blood offered in sacrifice will bring life to all who eat the spiritual food God has sent. Those who take me into their lives as if I were food will always have me with them. My Father is life, and I live because he sent me here. In the same way, those who feed on me will live because of me. This is the kind of bread from heaven you really need, Jesus said to the crowd. Your ancestors ate the manna and died, but those who eat the true bread from heaven will live forever. <clears throat> now, we have to understand that just like a lot of, of the things we read in the scripture, this passage is obviously not to be understood literally. Jesus didn't believe in cannibalism. He wasn't telling his followers that they literally needed to eat his flesh, you know, and drink his blood. There's no cannibalism going on here. There's no real eating the flesh and drinking the blood. Okay, and this is not, by the way, talking about the Lord's Supper. Okay, I'll get to that at the end, but I just thought I would let you know now, this is absolutely not talking about communion. Okay, Jesus is using figurative language here. It's a metaphor, and the metaphor is consuming his flesh and blood, eating him as if he were food. And that metaphor stands for internalizing him, bringing him, spiritually speaking, into your life, into your heart, into your mind. Let him fill you. Let him be there. Have a relationship with him so that he can teach you, encourage you, strengthen you, advise you, comfort you. Just be there with you, just like a friend is, except Jesus is more of a friend and a better friend than anybody else can ever be. Jesus can save your soul. Jesus can lift you up and make you better than you have ever been in your life before. Internalizing Jesus, taking him inside. That's what Jesus is saying when he's talking about eating the flesh and drinking the blood and everything. It's not literal. Of course it's not literal. It's a spiritual metaphor of internalizing Jesus. Now, how do we do that? I mean, if it were literal, we understand if you eat the flesh and drink the blood, that's, you know, that's literal. You eat and you drink. That's what, but, but it's not. So how do you internalize Jesus? Well, it's, it's a relationship. And, and it starts small, a little bit, and then over time it grows, and there's more, and there's more, and there's more, and there's more, right? It, it's, it works the same way as any relationship works. It starts out small and, and sometimes casual, and then it builds into something more intimate and, and, and more significant and, and more intense that, that changes your life. And that's what Jesus is talking about here. So how do we do that? Well, the first thing is that we have to want it. Okay, you, you have to want a relationship with Jesus. You have to want to know him. That's number one. And, and one of the best ways to get to know him is to read the Gospels. Just read the Gospels over and over and over again. Read Matthew, Mark, Luke, John. Then start again. Read it again. Matthew, Mark, Luke, John. Then go back and start again. Matthew, Mark, Luke, John. Just read them over and over again. The more you read about Jesus, the more you get to know him. The more you understand what kind of a person he was. The more you understand what was important to him. What he came to accomplish and what he was doing, and what he thinks, and how he feels. You'll see how he lived. You see, read the Gospels over and over and over again. The rest of the parts of the Bible can wait. You'll get to them, but just let them wait for now. Right now, read the Gospels over and over and over again, three or four times at least, right? Then move on into the book of Acts. Then move on into the letters, right? And, and, and you can go back to the Old Testament some other time. But remember, 
the Old Testament is part of the Old Covenant, which has been set aside, right? Set aside and replaced by the New Covenant, which is the New Testament. And so you, you need to stay focused on the New Testament. And where you begin is in the Gospels. Read them over and over again. Okay? So you have to want the relationship with Jesus. You have to want to be his friend. You have to want him to be your friend. You have to want to know him. And, and so read the Bible and get to know him. That's, that's first. Then spend time in prayer. Spend time talking to him. Right? There are some people out there who say, well, you're supposed to talk to God, not to Jesus. Well, that's all nonsense. Jesus is God. Okay? He's God living among us as a human being. Talking to Jesus is talking to God. Well, well, they're mean. Well, yeah, but you're supposed to talk to the Father God and not the Son God. There's nothing in the Bible that says that. There's nothing in the Bible that says that. Christians in the New Testament prayed to Jesus. You need to pray to Jesus. You need to talk to him. Thank him for, for what he did, for coming and dying to save you. And, and ask him to come into your life and into your heart. And spend time asking him to help you understand him and the Father and the truth and reality and life and what's important. And ask him to help you start changing your life. Okay, What kind of things do you need help with? What kind of things are you struggling with in your life? Every day, ask Jesus to help you with that. Listen to his advice. You know, prayer is a conversation. Conversations go two ways. You know, a lecture goes one way. A conversation goes two ways, right? You talk to Jesus, and then you be quiet while you let him talk to you. And you listen, and he will talk. Oh, you, you may not hear an audible voice or anything like that. I'm not suggesting that. But but that, you know, inner inner voice where he communicates with us and, and tells us what is right and what is good and what we should do and how we should live and how we should be. He, he'll, he'll respond. He'll talk to you. But you have to talk to him. And then you have to be quiet and listen and expect a response from him, then he'll, he, he'll respond. Okay? And it takes time. You can't go to sleep one night not knowing Jesus and then wake up the next morning going, oh, now I know Jesus. Okay? It doesn't happen overnight. It takes time. And it takes a lot of effort on your part. But if you spend the time reading the Gospels and spend the time in prayer and, and, and talk to him every day, Talk to him. When he knows in your heart you're serious, he'll respond and he'll be there and he'll help you. The way to ensure your eternal salvation. Once, once you have become a Christian, okay, once you've repented of your sins and asked for forgiveness and been baptized for the forgiveness of sins and you've been added to the church, then Focus on your relationship with Jesus. That's what you need to do. And the deeper that relationship, the stronger you become. And Satan cannot hurt you. Satan cannot touch you. Oh, he'll try. He'll come and he'll try to bother you and harass you and torment you and lie to you and, and, and try to make you miserable and pull you away from God. But the, the deeper your relationship with God and Jesus the less Satan can do. Okay? You just won't need to worry about Satan anymore. So internalizing Jesus is how you make sure that you're as strong as you can be and as capable as you can be and as powerful as you can be in your service to God. Now, I mentioned a little while ago, many people read this text and they get all confused and think it's talking about the Lord's Supper. Because, because the language, <clears throat> excuse me, sounds very similar, okay? Uh, Jesus said, uh, take this bread, eat it, this is my flesh, and drink it, this is my blood, you know, in, in Matthew 26 and in other texts. And so people see similar language and they think, oh, must be talking about the same thing. No, it's not talking about the same thing, okay? Jesus is not talking about the Lord's Supper here. Eating the Lord's Supper, okay, does not ensure that you have spiritual life 
Okay, just there isn't any passage in the New Testament that where we know it's talking about the Lord's Supper that says if you eat the Lord's Supper, you know, this will guarantee that you have eternal life. That that would be false teaching. Okay, there's nothing about the, the, that in, in regards to the Lord's Supper. The Lord's Supper is a reminder. Eating the bread reminds you about the flesh of Jesus. Drinking the blood reminds you about the blood of Jesus. And, and his body was broken. His blood was shed on the cross. It serves, <coughs> excuse me, I'm sorry, as a reminder, okay, of what he did for you and the, the benefits that you reap from that. Okay, the Lord's Supper is a reminder. This is not talking about anything that's a reminder. This is a spiritual metaphor about internalizing Jesus. And even though the language sounds similar, they're not, they're not talking about the same thing. They're about two, they're, the Lord's Supper and this are two completely different things, so don't get them confused. Okay, this is just talking about internalizing Jesus. Okay, not the Lord's Supper. And when you internalize Jesus, you are stronger and you are better than you otherwise could be. Well, spend some time reading this chapter and thinking about it. And as always, just in general, read your Bible, pray, go to church, and may God bless. <laughs>